little earlier this year, but we're going to do it. It's our annual NFL quarterbacks as NBA players. Some are perfect, some are not. We'll open it up to discussion. We'll go back and look at the ones we did last year with Surudi at the end and see how many mistakes we made. Lamar still Embiid. I think we have some obvious ones here off the top, but the Embiid approval rating is probably going to take a bit of a dip unless he's just great this season. And you know, who knows? Maybe they get to the Eastern Conference Finals. If they just got to the Eastern Conference Finals, I think that would be a win for the franchise considering we know Embiid's playoff problems. And the same thing for Lamar. Great regular seasons. More so in Lamar, I think, for the team both and statistically um but the stats just drop off in the playoffs it's it's a very real thing lamar's completion percentage goes down the qb ratings from 98 to 76 his touchdown interception ratios 126 45 in the regular season six to six in the postseason and beat all the numbers go down except for rebounding it's about the same all the metrics go down lamar's two and four of the playoffs i do wonder if lamar and Embiid will suffer from voter fatigue if Lamar had an even better statistical season than he did last year. Again, you didn't have the Mahomes part of it. Maybe Allen is the momentum guy here with feeling like they don't have as many weapons. But, you know, again, it's week one, so we don't really know that any of this is necessarily true. But the way Embiid got off to such an incredible start last season, um, I mean, statistically, he was off the charts. And you're wondering, like, is it is it going to be so impressive that you're just going to have to vote for him for MVP again? I always felt like there's there's voter fatigue in both leagues, depending on what the, that that postseason moment, and then the voters will spend all next year going, okay, I know what the stats are, but how come this guy isn't a little bit better? Uh, I think Lamar's overall approval rating is probably higher than Embiid's as far as popularity. I know Embiid kind of hammers home that message that he's the most hated player in the league. I don't think that's true necessarily at all, but it's probably going in the other direction because in basketball and with quarterbacks, if you're awesome and you don't win, we start to ask questions. Uh, What else? Rodgers. I had to work through this one. LeBron's just too easy. And LeBron's better at his thing than Rodgers is at his. How about most important ring? Giannis. Imagine if Rodgers didn't have a ring, how we would talk about him. I'd argue Giannis's ring, well, maybe it's, I don't know if it's more important than Jokic's. That's open for debate, too. If Jokic is going to win all these MVPs, but he didn't have the ring, but Giannis, I mean, they were kind of right there neck and neck all the time, the MVP stuff. But I just think Giannis would be looked at, the packaging of Giannis would be completely different. And the packaging for Rodgers, as we get to the end of this thing, if it was without a ring, we just would talk about them differently. Uh, Kyrie's probably another lazy comp. What about Durant? I went with this one. Rogers Durant. You can build both up because they're awesome at what they do. You could also kind of tear them down. You can try to discredit the ring for Durant, the ring count on that side of because of Golden State. You can't really do it with Green Bay, but if you're looking at Rogers saying, well, he's just as good, if not more talented physically than Brady and Manning and all these other contemporaries. But then you just go, yeah, but like we're not allowed to do that. I think the best exercise is what would you tell your kids? A little tougher for me, but you say like, all right, Cypher, come over here. Dad, tell me about Aaron Rodgers and Kevin Durant. I was at recess today, dot, dot, dot. You go, look, both are two of the best to ever do it at their positions. I think that's the fairest way to go about it. Tua. Trey Young. Both fan bases hate when you don't like their guy. This could have been Justin Fields, but Trey Young is a thousand times better than what Justin Fields has done on the field, right? The home team fan base defends both guys to the death. Um, Both really, really good, but something is wrong. Everything is built around both players, which is actually good and gets you the best out of Tua, where I think on the other side for Atlanta, it's become a negative. Mahomes. There is no Mahomes. As great as Jokic is, he's not Mahomes. Right? There's no, there is right now, you hear somebody else do this, there is no Mahomes in the NBA. Russell Wilson is Grant Williams. Pause for applause. Caleb Williams, a um, little early. It's only been a week. 
but let's make this one personal. If it doesn't work out, let's just say he has a disappointing rookie year, which again, some of these quarterbacks, they can have terrible starts statistically. We know the stories and then it clicks. Okay. But let's just say Caleb Williams has a bad rookie year. You know, they end up going six and 11, doesn't win rookie of the year, all that kind of stuff. And we're left this off season going, hmm. This one be, would be, I'd say, personally similar to Scoot Henderson. It'd be my own little Scoot Henderson deal. Love Caleb, love Scoot. Um, but the great thing about rookies is they get to play other seasons. It's incredible. You look it up. Happens all the time. Play as a rookie. Then that next year's called your sophomore season. Anthony Richardson. I'm going to bring Giannis back into the mix, but I'm going to go early Giannis. I'm going to go Vine Giannis, where there were these moments in games with Giannis where you couldn't believe what you were seeing. But the overall game, if you watch it start to finish, now look, I think everything worked out for him as one of the best players in the world. But it felt, I would say, if you go back to that first season with Giannis, it wasn't like he had the expectations of a number one pick or some of these other guys, but it was like, does he know what he's doing? Like, I don't think he does. But man, when it is good, it is incredible. And when it's not, but we're not going to post those plays because who cares? He's this freak from overseas. Richardson in the clips is absurd. We're still watching that first throw from Sunday. We can't believe he got that much on the football, but he did. But he also completed nine passes in a football game. Daniel Jones, Jordan Poole, anybody? This is our guy. Cool. Washington, it's not really their guy. They have other guys. It's not the same commitment to Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole is not dictating the future of the Wizards the way Daniel Jones is while the incumbent quarterback. But throws the ball to the other team. Poole cost another $95 million. Jones cost another $110 million, but he doesn't really cost another $110 million, so I'm not being totally fair. A lesser podcast host would just ignore the reality the Giants can get out of this deal after, the, after this year if they want to. After to get out of this contract. Um, so that's not, it's not 95 to 110 million, but it would have sounded good if I wanted to be less thorough. CJ Stroud, Anthony Edwards, both young guys. Oh, cool. Didn't, glad you're here. No, but the hope and excitement that you get to feel when you have a guy that can really be like, do we have a guy? Plenty of teams have guys. Plenty say, hey, I think our guy's pretty good. But what if you have, what are you, <laughs> what if you are on the cusp of something incredibly special that is going to change your mood every season for the next decade? The anticipation of that is something I'm actually jealous of. All right. And I think there's some similarities there because is it ahead of schedule? I mean, Ant's been around for a couple of years. It certainly was ahead of schedule with Stroud for last season. But I think when you think of the face of the franchise and the hope behind it, there are some similarities. Now, the only thing I would say post-Olympics, but I don't know how much we really care about the Olympics when it's not the Olympics. <laughs> Could there be any lingering Q rating ding for Ant? He talked a lot, wasn't really involved. If they were to lose in the playoffs earlier than expected, I mean, it just, I don't even think that has anything to do with the Olympics. I think it is the natural course of things. Like I'm telling you right now, in three years, if San Antonio isn't doing anything in the playoffs, there will be someone on your favorite TV or radio show or podcast saying, Wemby, I thought this guy was supposed to be good. Like, what's the deal? So Stroud is not in danger of the potential approval rating ding that Ant could be looking at. But again, it doesn't really have anything to do with the player as much as it has to do with us. Jalen Hurts, Jimmy Butler. One Super Bowl, one finals appearance. Oh, wait, two finals appearance for Jimmy Butler. Poor notes. Um, post their championship appearances, we probably are rounding up a bit on who they are in comparison to other players. Hurts going into 23, it was understood he was the best quarterback in the NFC. I was like, he's already the best quarterback in the NFC? I guess he is. Everybody else is saying it. I got to go along with it. The Hurts one, not as ridiculous. Butler, we had a very hard time with because of these incredible playoff runs 
in series from him. We should probably say series because there were times where he would slow down, but he was so incredible. What against Milwaukee? He was so good against Boston. Um, when they ended up playing Denver in the finals two years ago or two seasons ago, uh, that then you're you're like, well, he's not really ever thought of as a top ten guy, though. I don't think Jimmy Butler is, but then when you say it while he's in the finals again, you're thinking, yeah, but I keep saying this guy's not a top 10 guy. Am I wrong? No. Well, the other thing too, is that Jimmy doesn't play in the regular season. I would say that Jimmy Butler is a challenging guy to have your team built around. And I've never heard that about Jalen Hurts. So I actually am going to say no on this one. Bryce Young, Marvin Bagley. Bryce went one, Bagley went two. But early on, you're like, fuck and then somebody might be like hey how's the other guy doing that we didn't take speaking of luca trent dilfer thick white fiery no also a reach we're not going to allow that one make sure that's not in a breakout video brock purdy hassan whiteside how did you come up with that one well there's this lingering doubt, but then when you look at the numbers with Brock, you go, these numbers are nuts. Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra, Kyle Shanahan. Whiteside actually wasn't good. The numbers were. The advanced metrics were off the charts, but Whiteside wasn't good. Brock Purdy is better than a son Whiteside. I thought about Gobert. Somebody who's pretty good, but just at the same time, it's like, why do you keep telling me this guy's good? I don't know that either of those worked. Here's one that does work. Trevor Lawrence, Cade Cunningham. High profile, the money, the, expect- uh, the expectations, but littered with moments of, could this actually not be the guy? Cade, I thought, had a good year despite how atrocious everything was, so I still feel better about Cade I actually think I still feel good about Trevor Lawrence, but maybe if I had to pick one of the two, I'm fine with Cade. But if you look at the profile and the conversation around the two, actually some similarities. All right, last one. Josh Allen, Caitlin Clark. I think that's my best one. All right, let's bring in Saruti. Recap a bit from last year. No one thought they were getting a Brock Purdy Hassan Whiteside one today, but I think I've retracted it a bit. No, I like can to I work them out? Can I give you an alter? I actually wrote down a Brock Purdy one that I think is decent. What about Jalen Brunson? Later pick that might be the winner. Improbable yeah. rise, both smaller dudes. I mean, Purdy almost won the MVP last year, and I think some people were, you know, I mean, Brunson had an incredible year. I think, I think that's, I think that's the comp. I think that's the winner. All right, we've all agreed. Uh, you have changed. So I'm That's gonna, I'm, really good. No, no, I, I don't want to. I, I just I'm upset with myself that I didn't see it. You know? <laughs> no, it's okay. I, it's I got all the angles. Yeah. Well, I think I was trying to be funny with Hassan Whiteside because he doesn't look like Brock Purdy. I like to change him up so it's not just visual, visual. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I love the later pick coming out. Hmm. You know, but doubts. Contract. I think there's still doubt about Purdy in a way that like. I don't know who's left on the the doubt train with Brunson. You're right. I mean, maybe, maybe can he be the number one guy to win an NBA championship? Like, if you want to play that doubt game, like I would still, if that conversation happened, I'd allow it. You know, I wouldn't go, no way. Absolutely, Brunson can be the one for an NBA title team. That's that's a very short list. I say it all the time. I, you know, I don't, I don't know if he could be, but I I love the comp. It's it's one of my favorite ones, and I didn't even do it. So well done. I enjoy the Lawrence Cade one because I feel like both guys I still really like, but there's like a little bit of like, why aren't you better? But there's also like these external factors. I feel like for both guys that like there's, there's built in excuses that are fair, unfair, but I still like both guys. That's that. I think that was my favorite one. Interesting that you pivoted. If we want to go back to some of the other ones. So yeah, last year you had Jokic and Mahomes. You said nobody, nobody's Mahomes. So I think it's correct. Um, you had the Lamar and Bede one. You changed Josh Allen. Josh, last year, Josh Allen, you had Luka Doncic, which is you know kind of interesting. I was listening back to the segment this morning, and you said if either win a title, we'd kind of have to talk about the belt conversation, which is interesting because that was pre-Doncic and the, and, and the Mavs making the finals. So a little interesting there. 
Yeah, I like that one. I think it still works. My Josh Allen, Caitlin Clark thing is probably based on the Caitlin Clark Rookie of the Year discussion. The discourse. Where I think yeah. I've, the discourse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love the discourse. I love when that. I love how narrative became, like the new definition of narrative should be things that people say about the thing I care about that are probably right, but I don't want to believe that they're true. Yeah. Uh, I saw some Josh Allen discussions last year going into the playoffs that were atrocious on television. And I think the Caitlin Clark rookie of the year debates that were happening when it was still actually like you could, I can't wait to see, I'm going to go look up how that vote broke down. Um, like when I got hit with standings, they're going to play a part in it. I just went, this is so moving standings on. Standings like 10 games into the season too. <laughs> it wasn't just like, you know, we're not even halfway through. It's like, oh, you know, by the way, both teams, both teams were under 500. And I think the fever were like a half a game behind. Correct. So correct. Good anyway. times. Uh, you had Kyrie Aaron Rodgers last year. I do like, I think the KD one is is better because, I, you know, I just don't, Kyrie's as good as he is. I don't think he's on Rodgers level. Last year you had. I also think it's like the whole thing, right? You know, it's complicated it's the, dudes. The, the Probably step too back. Yeah, but I mean like the step back and, and look at like an almost two decade long awareness of, of two guys that really, at the end of the day, like if you want to be mean, fine. But if you want to be right, you're, you're probably going to explain both players. It's like, yeah, those guys were, were nasty. Which is correct. You had Bryce Young. You had uh, you talked about K, but then you landed on Scoot last year. So that, that actually does hold up pretty well. <laughs> I feel like. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, so if you had to buy shares of Scoot or Bryce Young right now, what would you tell your advisor to do? The correct answer is Scoot. Um, Maybe I'm just going to be stubborn, but I don't know, man. Because I, McShay on, on the Monday pod was talking about like you know him in a different situation. And like who knows, if he goes to Houston, he's not C.J. Stroud. I just refuse to believe that Bryce is the worst quarterback I've ever seen. And that's what he is. Like That's what the tape shows. But like I, I just, yeah. maybe I'll just be incredibly wrong. He, he's, he seems smarter than that in college. And just like the, his exactly. floor. His I would, floor I would agree. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, think, right. The worst quarterback you've ever seen is not something I think many people had on the scouting report for him. Yeah. So I, I kind of am aligned with you, even if I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. So Scoot is the right answer, but I don't know. I, I'll pass on that. Uh, you had CJ Stroud. So this year, what'd you have for him? You had um, Ant, which I think is the right answer. Last year, you had Chet. A little disrespectful okay. there. I don't know. I feel like Chet. You is, think it's disrespectful of, of who? Of CJ. Of CJ? CJ is a whole other stratosphere than Chet. Did I make any good points? Yeah. And I mean, it, you know, I, this was also, we did this in December. Um, and, you know, you kind of talked about like, you know, he's contributing to winning, which CJ did right off the bat too, obviously as a rookie. But I don't know. Uh, to me, to me, CJ is like a 1A future superstar. I think Chet is a really, really good player, but he's not that level, which I think you'd agree with, right? Uh, well, I mean, look, Chet's going to get to keep playing for a while, but as far as his importance to his franchise versus CJ's, there's no, no, there's no point in even discussing it. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's the next one? You had Justin Fields, you had, uh, Jalen Green, which I think actually flatters Fields now, maybe because the way Jalen Green ended last season, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore, but it was two top picks, potential face of the franchise not off to great starts and Jalen had much better moments and fields is on another team. So it doesn't work anymore. You had Mac Jones, James Boak Knight, uh, last year. <laughs> Boak Knight. Just, yeah. Which is <laughs> not, uh, I don't know that anybody wins in that. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I think that one still holds. Wish I wish I'd brought it back. And the last one you had, you, you couldn't find a Herbert comp and you, you just said prime CP three tentatively, which was, which was great, which I, you know, I don't know. It still works. Could I offer up a? I have two more really quickly for you. What yeah, about, what you're about so good on the Purdy one? Absolutely. What about Dak and Tatum? Uh, the, the case being like, obviously the title for for Tatum complicates it, but both guys great numbers, win a lot of games, but they just kind of feel like they're lacking something to be in that elite elite category. Like I'm not a I'm not a Dak sucks guy. I think he's a really good quarterback. I think it's yeah. not even controversial, and I think Tatum's really good. But there's just something about both of their games. I feel like that's. They're just right below that elite level. And I don't think they're ever really going to get to that elite, elite spot. So that's why I had the Dak Tatum comp. All you're really asking, though, is, hey, Dak, could you be the second best quarterback in the NFL? Which is a huge ask. And for Tatum, who's got all these all NBA first team finishes and 
you look at the MVP voting and where it could go, like if, if Tatum were fourth or fifth next year in the MVP voting, you wouldn't be surprised by any of that. So now you're asking Tatum is like, can you can you be at the level of Jokic, Giannis, and Luca? <laughs> it's it's a pretty big ad. So even if you, as you say it, you push back on it, I think it's a really good comp based on the universal hesitation in the NFL and NBA fan worlds of non-Celtics people or non cab or non-haters of both teams to just go like, all right, Tatum, give me your quickest response on like who you think he is. And it's probably, but yeah, you know, he's really, really good, but he's not, he's not that yeah, guy. But, which they're I both think, yeah, but you know, guys. Uh, yeah, also- but against, against the highest possible grading standard you could have, mm-hmm. which then feels like it becomes unfair. And I didn't even add in use that you mentioned both marquee franchise guys. Last one I had, I think this one's fun too. I had Kyler and Donovan Mitchell. Small guys, some drama around them. And when they're freaking nasty, they are nasty. But I don't know that I get that for the entire season all the time. All right. Okay. All right. We'll do it again until December.